1980, the first reports came in of a mysterious and relentless new disease. For a time, it was called GRID, Gay-Related Immune Deficiency, because it seemed to attack only gay men. Soon, the disease was reported among heterosexual drug abusers and hemophiliacs as well. By 1982, it was finally given a new name, AIDS. At that time, few were prepared to believe that AIDS would go on to stalk a new set of victims, the littlest victims of all. Bring the kids home for me. Oh, sure, sure, Jim, no problem. Hey, guys, have a good game. I'll see you at practice. Take it easy. She's not breathing on her own at all. Let's give her another amp of bicarb. Right, give her half a cc of epinephrine. All right, got it. Let's do blood gas. Okay. Up the O2 level, 100%. Plus the line. Anybody from the family here? The father's outside in the hall. Mm. How's the heart rate? Pulse is dropping. Come on, come on, Celie. Come on, come on, come on. She's going into V-fib. Turn up the peep on the respirator. Cardio. Just move that to the other side. Clear. 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 In a bit. Clear. Clear. What's the heart rate? No pulse, no respiration. Charge. Clear. 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 Still nothing. I'm gonna start growing a little furry white tail. Yeah, well, you promised. Your cholesterol's way too high. So, wanna tell me about it? And you're a wreck. Yeah, I was swamped at the lab, you know. It's just so. Uh... Honey, it's okay if you don't win the Nobel. Take it easy. If I win the Nobel, you could buy furniture for the living room. Oh, yeah. 
I had three kids die on me this month. God damn it, I'm supposed to make them well, not bury them. Can't you figure out what it is? Yeah, there's a lot of things. All sorts of different things. Their immune systems are down in the tubes. They get this mealy rash in their throat. And they can't swallow. They get pneumonia. They get diarrhea. You don't want to hear about it. It's brutal. I gotta be in the lab first thing, you know. We gotta get some sleep. And you've no idea what it is. I got a lot of theories. They're just theories. Look, I just need five minutes of your time. Okay, I'm gonna meet him. Hey, Ramesh. I want Alan to see some of the slides. Show him my Sealy. How's your transplant work coming along, Jim? Forget it, Alan. I got seven kids there. Their immune systems are shot to hell. We're asked to do assays on adults practically every day. This is the little girl, Celie, who died yesterday of pneumocystis. What's the reverse ratio on her? 0 0.2. Can you believe that? You're doing some fine work here, Jim. Why throw it all away in a wild goose chase? You don't buy, huh? Could be lioness disease, could be skid, could be almost anything. Now, wait, wait, wait a minute. I want to show you something else. Jim, I saw what you saw. I just don't think you proved it's AIDS. And if you can't prove it, then the state won't pay us for all these weeks of inpatient care. And you keep ordering gamma globulin. You know what gamma globulin costs? Oh, my God, Alan. I lost three children this month. Celia was 10 months old. I know it's tough on all of us. I'm desperate. I don't know where I'm going to get the money to pay oh, for it. It always boils down to money. If you want me to fight for more money, then you give me some science. Hard science. Okay. Will you think about it some more? Yes. Well, thanks. That's, that's all I really want. You know, I'll bet all these cases turn out to be congenital. Thanks, Ramesh. How's Doreen though? Not very good. She had another nosebleed last night, but her hemoglobin is over nine, so we didn't have to transfuse her, but I think she does need that tape. Oh, it sounds like a good idea. Hi, honey. Oh, see her, Dr. Oleski. Hi, honey. Hi. Getting ready to give her her vitamin K shot. Oh, yeah. Well, why don't we give Henry his shot first? Henry's very brave. Oh, yeah. Doreen's brave, too. Yeah. And Doreen's mother cooperated, right? Yes, and she's fine. She's asymptomatic. Doesn't make sense. I know. Okay. Are you ready for your shot now? Ready? Look at Henry. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. There she we doesn't go. care about him. Good girl. <laughs> oh, did that TV set in the playroom ever get fixed? No, we used up the budget when we bought it. Yeah, then right away it went on the fritz. Check like this damn thing. Wait. You have to know how to work it. Voila. You're amazing. The hearing is not too good. No, not really at all. I've asked for a consult with speech and hearing. Any luck with the mother? No. Can't get to her. No dice, huh? She won't talk to us. We're authority. What are you gonna do? Okay, you want me to pick them up? Yeah. yeah. Come here, Georgie. There you oh, go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Better, huh? Sure. Any luck with the foster home? Oh, we tried, but it's hard. <sighs> well, they just walked out on him? Looks that way. Her phone's disconnected, and we haven't heard from her in three weeks. Dr. Trider, one more. Well, Georgie's very healthy. Oh, yeah, he's doing great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he needs a little cuddle every now and then. Right. Yeah. yeah. Imagine growing up in a hospital bed. <laughs> what we got here to support your theory? A few hundred cases, nationwide, mostly homosexual. How coincident can it be that there's a new disease among adults and a totally new disease with almost exactly the same symptoms showing up in kids, and you're trying to tell me these are two different diseases? Come on. All I'm saying is let's get our science right on this. You start claiming AIDS is spreading vertically parent to child, and you're talking blood on the floor at the PTA. Well, if it's infectious and sexually transmitted, it's no different than herpes hepatitis. You're talking if. Well, sure, but... Well, that's not 100%. No, of course Look, I'm not so. saying you're wrong, but for God's sake, nail it down, will you? Oh, 
six months uh, playing detective and taking case histories, and what do we got, Ramesh? I can find nothing in the literature. No articles. It's most peculiar. Well, either we're barking up some crazy wrong tree, but nobody wants to believe it. Alan doesn't believe me. He called. He said he'd come up with money for gamma globulin for one more month. How the hell do we prove it's acquired? If the mothers it's acquired from don't have it, won't talk or take off. I'm out of here. I'll work a little longer. Mesh, how long have you been in here today? Only ten hours. This is like the black hole of Calcutta. Would you take care of yourself? I will. When you will. Yeah. Okay, see you later. Excuse me. Have we met before? Oh, no, man. I'm Dr. Alaska in pediatric immunology. Oh, yeah. You took care of my little girl. Right. Seely. Right. Can I see his chart? Sure, Jim. How are you feeling? What are you doing? What's wrong with me, Doc? I'm feeling terrible. Hi, it's Dr. Oleski. I'd like to order a blood sample on a patient in H5, Darren Thomas. Well? I find practically no helper cells. His ratio is no more than 0.4. We have been asking the wrong questions. We should have been asking about the fathers as well as the mothers. Here's this guy. He, he's an IV drug abuser. Is he gay? He says no. A hundred to one, he cruises the bathhouses in New York to support his habit. I think it's like any other sexually transmitted disease. The father passes it on to the mother who passes it on to the child. And the mother is asymptomatic? Yes, she is. Don't you see now it makes sense? I, I, I got to go to the CDC. Alan, I know a guy there. He's real good. Please. Do I have your permission? All right, but don't put it on my budget. Change. You either. I'm losing a little up here. Uh, Come on, let's get you set. You got any luggage downstairs? No. Are you still coaching Little League? Oh, yeah. You want a pennant, yeah? <laughs> Next year? Hey, listen, I just learned something I didn't know before. What? Remember how the base pass used to get all churned up when it had been raining? Yeah, sure. What do you think's the best way to get them dry? I have no idea. Kitty litter. No kidding. Yeah, groundskeeper at Yankee Stadium told me that. <laughs> I'm glad you're back. <laughs> familiar? Anyway, so there we are. We got three shopping carts full of kitty litter. <laughs> and the checkout girl, she looks at us and she says, what do you got at home? A lion? <laughs> AIDS and children. What do you want to tell me? Eight kids, all kinds of immune problems, lymphadenopathy, interstitial pneumonia, failure to thrive, thrush, you name it. How old? Neonates to 27 months. Now, you know me. When I got back to New Jersey, I was a happy guy. I was going to set up my lab, catch kids with immune defects early, get them in good shape. And hey, we did two workups a week. That was a lot. That was a busy week. I gotta tell you, Neil, these past months, we have done more and more and more. Plus, you should see all these adult cases. So what do you think? Fathers are sexually abusing their kids? Infecting them through the mothers. Oh, 
Wait a minute. I can think of three things off the bat that explain your cases. EBV, liner's disease, whiskered old. We're not looking at congenital defects here, Neil. It's a pretty ragged data, Jim. Oh, come on, I'm out there. You're not dealing with a guy from some two-bit laboratory in a New Jersey slum. I'm seeing these people for a year now. Hey, we get out in the field, too, you know. We've interviewed hundreds of cases. We're not sitting on our duffs down here. I didn't say that. All I'm saying is, is we need some money. Oh, we holy need... Moses. The axe is falling on budgets everywhere. You know that. We've been forced to pirate funds from our other programs. On Legionnaire's disease, they force fed you money, for God's sake. You want to know something? I know guys on the AIDS task force, there isn't even a dough to hire a single statistician to evaluate case control studies. That is crazy. Why? It's the wrong disease hitting the wrong people. Are you telling me that just because it's, it's gays and junkies are not going to do anything? It, it, this isn't that kind of a country, Neil. Then let's scream and shout, let's get the word out. I would. Oh, we did. And? <laughs> That's just ignorance, Neil. Once people know the facts, they'll come through. Just show them my stuff. Jim, I'll be honest with you. What you got here, it's all anecdotal. It's autopsy reports. It's what they call intriguing, but it ain't gonna accomplish diddly squat. These kids are dying, Neil. So are the adults. Scores of them. We got our hands full here, and I hate to think what's gonna happen two years, five years down the line. Would you believe there are people who think we're concocting the whole AIDS thing here just so we can get publicity and funds for CDC? And meanwhile, we're looking at the numbers coming in from all over the country. We're seeing a geometric progression. And you know what else we're seeing? Nobody gives a damn. I struck out. What did the CDC say? You know, when I first got my own lab, I used to think, who knows, maybe in a couple of years I could be on the cutting edge of immunology. Dreams. All sorts of dreams. No. It can happen. Barbara, these children have AIDS. Gays? No. No, not anymore. Anyone can get it? Probably, but... Jim, can you get it? It's highly unlikely. But it's possible. Anything is possible. How long have you known this, Jim? How long? It's just a theory I've been working on. Yeah, but you said those kids at the hospital infected with AIDS? Yes, look, at. I think it's being sexually transmitted. And these kids are getting it through their mothers. Like herpes or hepatitis. Damn it, Jim, you should have told me. I mean, didn't you think about us? Of course I did. I wasn't sure. I'm still not sure. I got people out there think I should be in a funny farm. 
I would never do anything that would put you or the kids in any danger, ever. Can you help these kids? Did the CDC say there was anything you could do? Jim? Adjusted. Isabel. Isabel, what, what happened? It's my checkup. Really? What for? They fixed up my heart. I have all new blood now. Well, tell me, tell me. What do you do with your fixed up heart? Dance. Dance? Really? Dance? Well, maybe the blood you got was from a dancer. And you'd be able to go. <laughs> See ya. Bye. Bye. She seems to be doing better now. All right, now, Trish, what seems to be the problem? She just keeps throwing up. Well, we'll get your fever down, and then um, we'll solve the GI problem, okay? Okay. Estelle, can we talk? Okay, I'll be right back, sweetie, okay? Don't cry. She'll be fine. We'll just go around the corner here, all right? She'll be okay. Right down here. Now, you have to understand, I'm not too good at this, but it's very Just important. go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. You have a job. Yeah. Yeah, I work nights at a convenience store. And, and the, the rest of the time? I go to college. Oh. Yeah, I'm taking a psychology course, and I'm taking a history course. Who looks after Tricia? My mom. Okay. Um... Listen, Doctor, you don't want to know any of this stuff, man. I think you want to ask me some real questions, but you're too embarrassed. Right? You're embarrassed, Doctor? No, 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 not really. It's just, um... Well, sure, I... I do. I have to ask you about sexual contacts. Okay. Yeah, I've had contacts. I've had a lot of them. I've even had to clap a few times. But I gave up the life. I mean, 10, 15 guys a night, I was about to lose my mind, you know? And yeah, I used drugs. I was on smack. But I don't chase the white lady no more. Not since before Trisha was born. Now, what I'm telling you is, I am getting my act together. You understand? And we are gonna make it me and my little girl together. Now, that is the stone truth, Doctor. Now, you got any more questions? No. Can I go be with my baby now? Sure, of course. Listen. You... You make her well, hear? I mean, you... Take care of her. Because I live for that little girl. I want to take her. I want the guys at NIH to see what I'm seeing. Now, if they diagnose AIDS, we're one step ahead of the game. Maybe we'll get a grant. Maybe we'll get a, a nurse. But listen, I think it's the right thing to do. Have you spoken to the mother? Uh, she'll come. I suppose she doesn't. Oh, she will. OK. Take her home in a few days. I know, I know, and you can, um, but this is a very special place. Special? What kind of special? It's in Bethesda, Maryland. It's the National Institute of Health. No, no, I don't want her stuck with no more needles. Yes, still, there's more. You may be sick, too. I'm pretty sure that whatever Trisha's got, she got from you. I've been very careful. I have... You have to understand, it, it happened before she was born, when she was inside of you. But I was fine all that time. I mean, I, I made sure that I was good and strong because I didn't want nothing to happen to my baby. 
you were probably already infected. Man, I don't get this. Have you heard about AIDS? That thing that's been going around the gays? It isn't just gays. Is that what you're saying to me? <sighs> Listen to her. She's scared out of a little mind. She knows you're going to stick her. These are just routine tests. Oh, yeah, good, because I got my own routine. And my routine is where she goes, I go. <laughs> Thank you. Tough cookie. Yeah, no. she's a fighter. It can wait. Come on, I'll give you a little tour. I hear you went to All see right, Neil well, in Atlanta. Oh, he told you. Huh? Well, not much goes on that we don't hear about. <laughs> yes, quite a bunch of young hotshots of scholars in Atlanta. <laughs> now... Paul, these are the workups we did on Trisha and all the other kids. Oh, thanks. I'll be intrigued to look these over. You know, we've got 12 AIDS experiments of our own ongoing now. Uh, this is one of our cellular immunology labs. And one of these can count up to 10,000 cells a minute. <laughs> that's a useful gadget, huh? That's incredible. Poor Ramesh, that's my associate. It's five years' work for him. Sorry Bob Gallo wasn't here. I wanted you to meet him. He's a brilliant guy. Yeah, I hear he's doing some work on AIDS. That's great news. I'd like to give you a piece of advice, Jim. Well, I sure could use it, Paul, because I don't know what the hell we're going to do about these poor children. There is a lot of controversy over this AIDS thing, a lot of politics, on top of which we have the real question of whether the gay's own lifestyle isn't the villain here. But what about the drug users? Oh, you know as well as I do, these junkies lie a lot about their sexual habits. Who's to say they're not having homosexual contacts on the side? But it's in the women, too, and, and their children. I mean, look at the evidence. We Just... will look at it, Jim. We'll study all the evidence carefully. But if I can remind you of something I tried to drum into you young Turks in medical school, when you hear the sound of hooves, look for horses, not zebras. <laughs> Come on, I want to show you something over here. Never seen so many white coats in my life. Yeah. Well, these are the big boys. These are the guys that are going to find a cure for cancer someday. They said I checked out just fine. Believe me, they looked me over real good. So who's right, Doctor? Well, it's hard. Um, see, with this disease, you can, you can carry the infection and not show any sign of the symptoms. Yeah, well, if I don't feel it, I haven't got it as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Okay, but you know, you just gotta take care of yourself. Eat well and keep your strength up. Don't worry, I have the strength. Well, Jim, I have to hand it to you. So you saw what I saw? Yep, you've done it. You've come up with a genuine, old-fashioned medical mystery. A mystery. I'll be frank with you. I thought it was going to turn out to be Epstein Barr. But it's not Epstein Barr. You're absolutely right. It isn't. Jim here was one of my top students. So you agree with me that it's, it's AIDS? I'm sorry, Jim. I know you'd like to be the first person in the U.S. to announce a case of AIDS in children, but we just can't help you there. But didn't you see... What we saw was a lot of abnormalities in B-cell function. Right. And I'd say it was one of the more unusual cases, and... Yes, we'd like to see the patient again in six months. We'll re-evaluate then. We are interested in hard science here, Jim, as I'm sure you know. So am I. Thank you, gentlemen. Sir. Yes, sir. You know, if I were you, I'd find another windmill to tilt at. 
Yeah, you may find this one tilting back. And Romney wouldn't budge an inch. Careful. No. No, he seemed to think all I cared about was being first to announce this. I don't give a damn about being first. I just want people to wake up to recognize there's a problem, give these kids a chance. Well, I'll get it. Hello? Oh, yeah, just a second. Jim? It's the Wall Street Journal. We don't have any stocks. Hello? Yes, this is he. Where did you hear that? I'm not at liberty. No, I'm not going to deny it, but this is, is very complicated. All right, I guess I can't stop you. Get ready for this. Wall Street Journal has heard that I'm treating children with AIDS. They're gonna do an article. Damn. Jim, maybe you should call the press office at the hospital. They could help. I don't know what to say to these people. I've never held a press conference before. You answer their questions and try and give them the facts. Yeah. Now, you, you talk to these people all the time. Do they have any medical knowledge or what? <laughs> Use your data and tell them what you're trying to do. Yeah. Boy, this is terrible. You don't publish medical news in the daily press. We could lose our grant money. <laughs> you don't have a choice. The story's out. They want to talk to you. Come on. One at a time. cases and children. How many of these cases have Can we talk to the children, Dr. Lesley? No, I'm sorry. You can't talk to the kids. Are they dying? How Isn't this a disease of gay men? No, it is not a disease of gay men. It is just as much a disease of the poor, of children, of heterosexuals, of IV drug abusers. Doctor, are you saying anyone can catch AIDS? What? Are you saying anyone can catch AIDS? Yeah, what about that? As far as we know, it is not contagious. But you said children are coming down with AIDS. Yes. How do they get it if it's not contagious? You take through the placenta of the mother. Oh, come on. Well, how is the mother getting it? Please, Dr. Uleska, isn't it normal to publish findings such as you're reporting now in medical journals first? And in that case, why haven't there been articles by you or anyone else in the scientific press? Naturally, we intend to publish our research. Um, you have to understand there are many congenital immune defects that can be confused with the effects of AIDS. And that's where you people can help because, frankly, we need more staff, more money. The children need medications. Dr. Lesky, how do you protect yourself? How do I protect myself? Um, I wash my hands. And I'm careful when I handle bodily fluids and needles. You feel that's sufficient? I take precautions. That's it? Fear AIDS spread by hand contact. Can't they get anything right? Senior press? What? Oh, I don't believe this. Pearson at St. Mary's thinks you're grandstanding. Somebody else who shall be nameless called up and said, why is this guy trying to capitalize on the AIDS paddock? Is he trying to build up his lab or something? Well, what the hell am I supposed to do? I got the press on my back like an army of quacking ducks. We got no money for medication for the kids. And poor Ramesh here, he's all alone. He's counting cells in there like it's the age of steam. Jim, please, it's okay. It's okay. I'm on your side. I just want somebody to be on the side of the kids. That'd be real good. How's her appetite been? She can't swallow too good, and she cries all the time. Oh, yeah. Come here. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna have to dilate her eyes. It's only gonna take a minute, okay? It's okay. I'll be right back. It's all right, honey. Hang on, hey. Hey, 
Aren't the kids are supposed to get their food inside the room? Yeah, but I can't take no risks, Doctor. I heard this thing they got they can pass it on. Hold on. M Mary! Doctor, uh, I got a wife to support, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, would you come with me? Would you? Please? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Does she look like a lethal weapon to you? You know, I have a wife, too. Yeah. And I have kids. You think I'd risk my own kids' lives if there was any danger? Now, Maria here is two years old. She's just a little girl. They're all just little kids, you know? You know what they need is to be held and hugged and fed. Dr. Eaton. Jim, I'll take her. Dr. Eaton, 2203. Come here, sweetie. Okay, here we go. Now. When I tell you, I want you to hold her hands like this and just hold her down, and I'm going to put these in her eyes. Now, th these that? are nothing. They're just like when you get your eyes measured for glasses, okay? Now, Tricia, I'm going to put some drops in your eyes, okay? You're going to feel, no, you're going to feel just a little splash, okay? Now, hold her now, okay? Here we go. Ready? Ready? Oh, we go. Okay. Uh, it's okay, honey. I'm sorry. Okay. Ready? One potato, two potato. Hold her down. Hold her still now. Three potato. Okay. okay. There we go. All done. All done. All done, sorry, honey. Baby. All done. All done, honey. Sorry, What's baby. the matter, honey? Are you okay? Trish? Trish? Trish, honey? Trish? Trish, honey? Trish? I see you. Stat! I need to get an IV started! Yeah, okay. I gotta go. We need a nurse stat in 322. <laughs> I get it. Let's go. Let's get out of the way. Get out of the way. Look out. Okay. Hey, honey. It's okay. Right here. It's okay. It's gonna be all right. Yeah, it's okay, Trish. Come on. Come on. Let's get a line into her. Let's get her. Clean it off. It's okay. It's okay, baby. It's right here. Ready? So I see you know we're coming. They're getting ready for us, and we're ready. Okay, ready. Let's go. Let's go. Go. Okay. Go. Trish. Monitor. I want to see your vital signs. Cyanotic. Is that a dopamine drip? She's apneic. Sinubator. Okay. Pupils are dilated. I know. I, I put eye drops in. You got a reading yet? Not yet. Let's turn it. 80 over 50. Using sodium bicarb. Got it. Pressure's dropping. Epinephrine. Got it. Let's hit it with a round of drugs. I'm not getting anything here. I don't understand. The IV's infusing well. Yeah, it is like Alice in Wonderland. Up is down, left is right with this disease. It's got a mind of its own. It's so damn sneaky. All I did was dilate her eyes. Jim, it's a CDC. Thanks. Hello. Jim, hi, it's Neil. Hi, Neil. Hi, how are you? I'm uh, hanging in. How are you? Not so good. Uh, one of my kids just went into severe anticholinergic reaction from eye drops. Uh, well, here's something else that'll make you sweat. We think it's in the blood supply. What? I'm putting it out in next week's MMWR, but I thought I'd give you a preview. Maybe it explain some of your mystery cases. Doctor, do you know how long it takes to track down a blood donor? Dave, this is an emergency. We have to know. Now, I lost a kid a couple of months ago. She was transfused at birth. Okay, uh... Name of the patient who received the blood. Ellison, E-L-L-I-S-O, and Doreen. Okay, Ellison, Ellison, <sighs> Doctor, this is gonna take a while. I'll be back. Trish? Trish, honey? Can she hear me? I don't think so. She's in a coma. Oh, oh man. Man, this ain't right. This just ain't right. We are gonna try and bring her out of this. It, it, it may take a while. 
Why don't you try and get some sleep and we'll call you? No. I'm staying right here. Baby. Dave in records wants to see him. Ellis and Doreen, Neonate, transfuse one unit type A positive. Great. I need the name and address of the donor. I want the name of every person who got that blood. Doctor, you're not seriously yes, asking am, me. Dave. Yes, I am. Excuse me. Hi, Dr. Oleski. You were paging me. I'll be right up. Don't, don't do anything till I get there. Don't say your word. Mom's gone by you. A marking bird. Come on, baby. Come on, it's all right. What's going on? She won't put her right down. Now. And if that marking bird don't sing, Mom's gonna buy you. Stay. Uh, Stay away from me. A diamond ring. And if that diamond Still, ring turns you, you, I've never taken her away from me. This is my baby, and I am gonna take care of her now. Come on, baby. Come on, honey. And if that looking glass gets broke... Estelle, Estelle, you can't... What? What can't I do? This is my baby. What can I do? And if that looking glass gets broke, it all is gonna find you. Oh, oh till he goes. Oh, oh. Mom is gonna buy you. Oh. She's not suffering anymore. She's not hurting anymore. Let me take her. Let me take her. No. Estelle, I'm gonna have to ask you something, and this is very hard for me. I hope you understand. We have other children like Trisha. 
And there's a whole lot more out there we don't even know about yet. For the sake of all of them. Please. Would you... Would you let us... Let you what? Would you let us perform an autopsy on Trisha? Oh. Please, Estelle. Oh. Estelle. After all, my little girl has been through. And you want to cut her up? Please. Estelle, if we're ever going to have a chance of beating this thing, what can I tell you? We need this. NIH operator, may I help you? Yeah, hello. Uh, Dr. Gallo's office, please. Will you please hold? Yes, yes, I'll wait. You asked for it? You got it. Who's the donor? You track him down yet? Uh, in a way. He's from New York, and he died of AIDS last month. Uh, how many kids got blood from this guy? Uh, I've traced a dozen of them so far. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember him. This is fantastic, Dave. Oh, and her. I knew it wasn't congenital with her. Dave, thanks. Really, thanks. This is great. Anytime, Doc. Yeah, hello. Hello, Dr. Gallo's office, huh? Yeah, this is Dr. Oleski. Could you tell Dr. Gallo, we have a case here, um, a two-year-old black girl. We think it went into her brain. Yeah, yeah, so we're, we're gonna be sending a specimen down tonight. You should have it in the morning. Thank you. Bye. Cruz Isabel. Transfused January 12th, 1982. Isabel, it's the dancer. Oh, God. Oh, no. Hey, Neil. Hey, Jim. How you doing? How was your flight? Tiring. A lot of turbulence. Yeah? Well, keep your seatbelt fastened. Come on. I got all my charts for you. I got numbers, tables, the works. You can do all the case studies you want. Right. Better still, you can see some real life patients. Excuse me. Huh? Hey, Anthony. How you doing? Good. Give me five. There you go. Kind of cookies. Okay. You look good. Thanks. To be honest with you, I, I could use some support. This couple, they had the little girl. I told you about the bloody ballerina. Hi, Mary. How you doing? Do you know Neil Rudkin? Sure. Mary? Hi. Nice to see you again. Well? They're waiting. Okay. I don't believe this. You mean you took blood from that and gave it to our little girl without even asking where it came from? Mr. Cruz, you have to understand, there's no way we can test blood. <laughs> we, we don't even know for sure whether AIDS is caused by a virus. Her kid sister uses Isabel's toothbrush every day. I just want you to know, we have twins here. One with AIDS, one without. They've shared everything from the womb on up. It doesn't seem to jump from one child to the other the way you think. Jim, Amy's in respiratory distress. Uh, I don't want you to think we're giving up on her. We're gonna go full guns on Isabel. Okay? I'm sorry. Mary, I'll be right back. Jim, yes. don't forget your new admission, okay? Oh, yeah, right. And I have a call holding for you. Uh, oh, take a message for me, will you please? Okay. Her motor coordination is gone. It's affected her brain. Poor kid can't walk. Hi, Mary. Hi, Isabel's parents went in to see her. You, you tell them I'll be there in one minute. Sure. Come on down to the lab. I'll, I'll set you down with some of the charts. Wait a minute. What do I see? My friend Georgie. This is Georgie. We found him in the foster home three months ago. Hi, Joe. What happened? Salmonella. Esophageal thrush. I see the chart. Hey, Georgie. Oh, no. Neil. Father, I have a drug user. Mother, too. What do you want to do? Are his foster parents here? Yeah, they're in the playroom. Thanks, Joe.
So what you're telling us is, you sent us home with Georgie, who's an AIDS kid. See, what you have to understand is, you can be infected with AIDS and not have any symptoms. I mean, we, we thought Georgie was a normal, healthy child. But we didn't know. I'm so sorry. I want to see him. Sure. He's just going to get sick and sicker. He doesn't have to. We can get him through this episode, and then he can go home again, if you take him. I don't know. We didn't figure on this. Lord. Oh. Lord, poor little baby. I'm gonna fight every inch of the way for Georgie. Lord. I ain't no nurse. Give it some thought. Here, I'll take him. We'll see you then. You don't know that. You always take these tissue samples to the airport yourself? Well, I like to get into Gallo as fast as I can. Excuse me. Jim. Jim, the problem is, all these data you've been showing me, they're not prospective. Oh, come on, Neil. You've got to have ongoing histories for compliance with CDC standards. Man, look what this country spent on Legionnaire's disease. You have got to get the word out. I... You said yourself, this is a major catastrophe. Look, this is nothing against your work. This is good work, but you've got to remember who you're dealing with. This is not some third world country. We've got a trillion dollar budget. I, I agree with you. Look, we're both doing our best. We're both frustrated. Look, I'm not the only one who sees what's going on here. You should talk to Harry Rubenstein in New York. He's seeing what I'm seeing. Then maybe you'll believe me. Hello? Do we make it in time for the flight to Maryland? No problem. Are you kidding me? Good. Have a good one, Doctor. Thanks. Drive safely. Yeah. You think some Bible Belt congressman enjoys explaining to his constituents why he's spending all their dough on a bunch of gays and junkies? Look, I have to believe that the good guys will win. I have to believe my president really cares. And when he finds out the truth, he'll reach out. Otherwise, I feel like I'm walking into a slaughterhouse here every day. All I can tell you, Jim, is just because you want to do some good, just because you're right, doesn't mean you'll win. Neil, Neil, one nurse part-time. You never give up, do you? Thanks for coming. We owe it to the unfortunate to be aware of their plight and to help them in every way we can. No one can quarrel with that. We must and do have compassion for all the victims of this economic crisis. But the big story about America today is the way that millions of confident, caring people 
those extraordinary, ordinary Americans who never make the headlines and will never be interviewed are laying the foundation. Hey, Dad! Not just for reason. Risk is a plane of giants. Come on, let's go! Right, the metal ends. No, outside, come on! From coast to coast, the power of the jobs, the new classrooms, the laboratories, and the new science sites, and in churches. That sounds pretty good. Come on, let's go! Okay, but right now... It'll be okay. You'll be fine. <sighs> I hope you're right about these guys. It's perfect timing. They're on your side. Okay, call me when you need them, all right? Jim. Jim, have you heard from the Munsons? They were supposed to pick up Georgie. They didn't show? No. Oh, boy. Well, I keep trying to reach them at their house. Okay. Yeah, about Take a look. Jim, they're ready for you now. What is going on here? Steve, I'm Cheryl Alessandro. We've spoken on the phone, and this is Dr. Jim Molesky. Hi, how do you do? You know, uh, guys, we're, we're, we're not dealing with uh, radioactive fallout here. Well, can you give us a guarantee that none of us will come down with AIDS? No, I don't know what you do in your private lives. Can you fill me in on the complete story? We'll stick with these if it's all the same to you. And this is Mary Pryor, a colleague of Dr. Oleski's. How do you do? Look, what we want to get across is that the, we've got children here who could live relatively normal lives at home, but we're really hurt for home care, support, and staff. Mm. You got any white kids here? We're looking for a good ethnic mix. <laughs> Who's this little fellow? Excuse me. Hey, Georgie. This is Georgie. Georgie, remember Henry? Remember Henry? Here we go. Like Henry. Georgie is one of the kids I was telling you about. Um, we think Georgie could do just fine at home. Unfortunately, his foster parents seem to have gotten the same idea as you folks. That's a great story. Kid abandoned by parents. It's okay, Georgie. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Hey, sweetie. It's okay. Remember Mary? That's a good boy. Bad boy. We have him on IV gamma once a month now. He's doing just fine. There's no danger of him passing on anything by casual contact. Hey there. Hey. I think it's time his father held little Georgie. I'm sorry we're late. <clears throat> the dumb car broke down in Trenton, and you know what it's like with those damn tow trucks. Sir, aren't you worried about this disease, this mysterious killer? Yeah, we're, we're scared. We didn't bargain for any of this. But, uh, see, when we found out, well, little Georgie had been living with us for a couple of months, what were we supposed to do? Love came first, then the disease. <laughs> so no way we could let him go on living in a hospital. Anyway, he's, he's a tough little kid. He deserves the best. The House Subcommittee on Health and the Environment will come to order. And we are pleased to have as our witness today to present the administration's response, Dr. Edward Brandt. <coughs> Assistant Secretary of Health for the Department of Health and Human Services. Thank you very much. I think it is very important that we recognize that AIDS is not a simple disease. 
It is a very complex disease. And indeed, it may turn out to be one of the most complex diseases that we have faced, particularly in epidemic proportions. Now, the CDC first identified the disorder in June 1981. And according to your testimony, the first NIH grants were made 15 months later, and then for only $165,000. You're right. <coughs> grants were not awarded until after a thorough review. So we have, in August 1982, requests for applications, and then April 1983, money is now starting to flow. So it took from June of 1981 until last April for funds to start flowing for research grants. For research grants, that is correct. Almost two years after the outbreak, the CDC has spent $4.5 million last year on AIDS. Is that a fair statement? Uh, yes, sir, that is a fair statement. Now, when the Reagan administration submits its budget for 1984, we find that the request is not for $4.5 million or more to deal with an ongoing health crisis. The request is for only $2 million. How can you justify reducing the funds for this public health crisis when we are in the middle of the crisis and not at the end of it? Well, you know, obviously, one can always go back and look at one's actions earlier and try to determine whether you would have done things differently. Really, it is only in the last few months that we have begun to have a more full understanding of the complexity of this illness. Now that you understand the complexity of the illness, why are you asking that funds be reduced for the Centers for Disease Control? I will have to go back and look at that. <clears throat> I heard what you said earlier. I was not aware that we had done that. And indeed, information I was just handed is that money will probably go up in 1984. So I will have to go back and find out the source of that information because I, I am just not clear. Why is the administration's proposal for 1984 for AIDS work at the CDC to reduce it back to $2 million after we find that they've spent $4.5 million on AIDS research? Well, at the time that budget was being prepared, of course, we anticipated that we would be a good way down the road to a solution of AIDS. I'm sorry, what? We were at that time believing when we prepared that budget, we really were convinced that we would be a long ways down the road uh, toward a solution to this problem. Well, if you're a long ways down the road from a solution... A, a long ways down the road toward a solution. Down the road towards a solution. Why cut the fund? Once we solve the problem, we don't need the money. But you haven't solved it yet. I'm well aware of that. <laughs> it is inconceivable that you would ask the CDC to suffer a cut in money for AIDS research when you were in the midst of what may be the worst public epidemic since smallpox. I am absolutely frustrated by this whole experience, in large part because I want us to solve this problem. I think our research steps and our research activities in this disease have been scientifically responsible. I think we will solve this problem, and the steps we are taking are the steps that are essential and important to doing so. Ramesh, what the hell am I supposed to do with these? You fill them out, send them to NIH, then NIH pays you. Then they pay me. That's right. So look what I'm doing. They turn me into a vendor of body parts. Okay. In the cause of science and a storage fridge for our lab. Letitia Manson's lung biopsy. $22.95. Liver tissue. Thirty-three dollars and fifty cents. I'm telling you, they should have tried a squeeze play. Dad, when is Mr. October bunt? In May. Mr. October should bunt in May. Mom's not gonna be pleased. That's your second burger. Your cholesterol's gonna be higher than Reggie's batting average. Hey, that's not too bad. That's pretty low. Yeah, well, I'm keeping count. What are you, the KGB? Yeah, give that a break. Shut up, shrimpo. Hey, time out. Time out. Jimmy's right. You're right. Dad. Yeah. Kid came up to me yesterday at school and called me AIDS virus. That's ridiculous. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Why? He'd seen you on TV. And what'd you do? Punch him out. Oh, come on, John. That's not the answer. Well, I didn't know what to say. He could tell him that your dad loves you as much as his dad loves him. 
and that I would never do anything that was not safe for you or your, or your brother or your mom. Do I have to say Rose? Just walk away. But don't get mad. AIDS virus. I know. Can you believe it? Jim, this isn't going to stop, is it? You know, you've been on TV five times, and every time you say that they got it wrong, so you have to go on again to help them get it right. It has to do some good. I've got to believe that. Well, it's not doing us any good, Jim. And it's not doing the kids any good when they have to go to school the next morning after one of these shows. We have to get the word out, otherwise nothing will ever change. I don't think I like what happens when you do get the word out. Okay, then let's move to Minnesota, huh? How about that? I'll pat tummies in Minnesota and cure the colic. You can get a washer and dryer. Yeah, Jim, look, don't turn this into something about appliances. You know, we're talking about our children's lives here. Barbara, I don't have an answer. I don't have an answer. I just wanted to be a good researcher and a good doctor. I don't want to be an advocate, but I am one. So what are we going to do about it? Just one say no. Wow. Say I'm too tired? Gee, I can't be bothered. No, no, you can be bothered, Jim. You'll be bothered about your own family. I mean, the late nights and the bad tempers, we're used to that. You're a doctor. But um, cameras and pictures in the paper, finger-pointing, name-calling, you know, that was never part of the deal. When is it gonna stop? I'll stop when I don't have to worry about paying for a Broviac tube so Georgie can live a few weeks longer. The Mets one? Yeah, sure, no. Congress voted an extra $12 million for today's research. That's There's grant money out there. Come on, let's go get some. baseball stuff in the basement, will you? And I'll pick it up when I get back from Washington. All right. Good luck. Very. Thanks. Thanks. I will. Good luck. Good luck. desperate Kevin, you know? I mean, uh, his existence is intolerable for everyone. He's sitting in a room. He's bleeding. Do you want to go no code on him? I don't know. I don't... I mean, are there any suggestions? I mean, you got a head that's functioning on a body that's fading. I was thinking, Teresa, maybe another look at her lungs. <laughs> the number of times that kid has managed not to have a lung biopsy. Well, I'm in favor of going all out on her. Now, what do you think? I mean, are there any objections? Of course not. Okay? Yeah, that's what yeah. I think. No objections. All right. Well, we're done. Right. That's it. Okay. 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 Uh, I wanted to talk to you about that. Yeah. 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 Y
I wanted to listen. It's always interesting. Something wrong? Yeah, I heard from the NIH today. I didn't want to tell the guys. About our grant? Yeah. Approved. But not funded. Last. When we look back at what we did for AIDS, we are going to be embarrassed as a country. We're going to say, how could we have done this? How could we have known this was going on? When thousands of people were dying that didn't have to? We could have contained the epidemic, but we didn't spend the money on it. Well, maybe there's a good side to this. Yeah, show me. I'd like to see that. You know what it is? The government doesn't give a damn about the people with AIDS. They've written them off. The sooner they die, the better. Because then there'll be less of a drain on the healthcare system. Well, you know how it is. If we got the grant, there'd be all kinds of strings attached to it. I'd rather have strings than dead babies. Approved but not funded. Sure. Yeah, we're approved, huh? We're the peons. We're the poor slobs that take care of the patients. Everyone approves of that. But they fund the nice, pure, clean research. Yeah, but the point is we could do both. The money is there and the technology is there right now. Maybe they don't understand that it's the patients who are going to suffer. Yeah, and I'm stuck for lack of a few lousy bucks for buying an oxygen machine for a little Alvin to use at home because he's coughing his lungs out. Or, or, or a nurse nutritionist to make sure Karen eats properly because her mother was stoned half the time. Hey, Jimmy, give me a slice of ham. How about Jim. it? Jim. Just one little slice. Yeah, it's not good for you. Come on, Jimmy, don't be a pain. No, 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 no. Give me the ham. Don't be a smart guy. Sorry. You're a doctor. You know it's not good for you. I've had a lot on my mind lately. You know how it is when you're worried. You want to have a treat every now and then. I just don't want anything to happen. I know. I wanted my father to be around forever, too. Even when I got older and I, I moved out, I still worried about him. I'm gonna take care of myself, I promise. Okay. So you can bug me all you want. All right. Okay? Good night. I just want you to know I am not selling light bulbs here. Hey, I'm not getting upset. Look it, look it. I have nothing but admiration for Dr. Gallo down there. Dr. Gallo deserves a Nobel Prize, but if you want him to keep getting his tissue samples, then you guys in accounting had better damn well figure out another way to fund my work or the shipments stop, okay? Now, no more invoices, no more petty cash. You got that? I think we came to an understanding. Negotiation is always good. So the bottom line I'd like to leave you with is AIDS is with us. We have a major problem. We have to educate ourselves. And we have to educate our community about this disease. And we have to provide hands-on, compassionate care for both the children and the adults who have this disease. And somehow we have to ensure 
that our educational efforts reach the people most needs to reach. The adolescent, the minority woman of childbearing age. Because we're not getting that message out. I mean, we're not going about it in the right way. I tell you, we're, we're fighting in our school systems about whether we should talk about sex or not. <laughs> Rather than recognizing that, as I said before, the wolf is at the door. Now, this is a, um, it's a church in Venice, Italy. Uh, 13th century, I think. This was built in response to, uh, well, as a thanksgiving, because the plague that had been running rampant was stopped. And it's interesting that this was their response. Um, the amount of money that they uh, spent on this church far outstrips the amount of money that we have put into trying to stop this disease. Jim, don't move. You got 100% occlusion in the right coronary artery. Wait, I, John, are we talking about this? I don't think so. Your collaterals are excellent. I'm going to go for medication and diet. Diet, buddy. <laughs> got to get that cholesterol down. Okay, okay, that's a deal. You're a witness. You bet I am. And take it easy. Yeah. See you, Johnny. <sighs> Jim, this is serious. I know, I know, honey. This is just what you've been telling me all along. I want you around for a long time. I can't do it for you. Honey, I'm gonna change, I promise. You, you don't get much closer to seeing the light than feeling a pain like that in your chest. I just love you. That's all. I love you, honey. Poor Georgie. Keep Georgie going. Keep them all going. Is that too much to ask? Please. Seven, six, five, feeling sleepy, four, three, eyes closing, two, very sleepy now, one. Now, I want you to listen carefully and do what I say. And the next time you feel the urge to eat something bad for your health, the urge will fade just as soon as you say to yourself, I do not want that. I am not hungry. I will not eat that. I am not hungry. 
I will not eat that. No, don't touch it. It's just a nibble. Saved by the bell. Mm -hmm. Don't enjoy your hamburger so much, Jimmy. Jim, it's Dr. Gallo. Dr. Oleski, can I interrupt you? Jordan's B and T cell counts. Pretty good. I got a call last night from Dr. Gallo. Something new? More serum? He's isolated the AIDS virus. Truly? That's what he said. I think I'll sit down. You okay? Once I thought, maybe we'd do it here. No, you didn't. In my dreams. In my very wildest fantasies. You too, maybe? Nah. Come on, be serious. That good air, Georgie. Mrs. Jenner, please come to admitting. Mrs. Jenner, please. Dr. Come. Oleski, can I speak to you for a moment? Sure. He's not going to make it this time, is he? I'm not ready to say that. His O2 saturation is what, Mary? 96. All right, that's good. 96 is very good. I don't want no more plastic tubes. He's too little. No, no, look, look. Once it's in, he won't even feel it. It'll, it'll, it'll just buy us some more time, at least. I don't want no more tubes. We asked for four years. He'll hardly have three, will he? No. No, not three. We loved him as much as we could. And we prayed as hard as we could. I don't know what to tell you, Mrs. Munson. We've done our best. We don't have an answer. I wish to God we did. I wish we had, I wish we had a million dollars. I wish we had medication. I wish we could help. You did. You helped, Dr. Oleski. You don't seem to know it, but you helped a lot. So please, don't you go feeling bad now. None of us have any time for that. We have to help Georgie and all the other little children. Hmm?
Georgie's still hanging in there. Fat kid's amazing, isn't he? Makes you wonder what he might have become. Somebody with that kind of spirit. Maybe a test pilot. Or a great choreographer. Or a scientist. How you doing? Excuse me? What are you working on? Federico. Oh. Dr. Oleski. I have a confession to make. Yeah? I rode off to medical school. There's an acceptance for me at Chicago. I want to become a doctor. I'll be leaving you. Unless I... I think that's really great. <laughs> You make a terrific doctor. <laughs> well, maybe you'll win the lottery and get a machine that'll count cells like Victor. <laughs> you gotta make me one promise. When you get your degree, you come back here and you work with me, okay? With pleasure. Oh, damn. I'm really gonna miss you. Hiya, Vernon. <laughs> yeah, uh, what are you doing? Uh, Lori's losing ground. Oh, I'm going to the bottom of the ocean for her. How's Tony? Well, his feet was down. Let me see his chart. I'll take a look. Here he is, right here. Thanks. See ya. Uh-huh. Jim. Yeah? Jim, do you know what time it is? It's a little after two. Why? You are supposed to be at that lunch. Lunch? We've got plenty today. They're giving you the giraffe award. Oh, boy, I forgot. God, I forgot to kill me. I'll tell them you had an emergency. Oh, thanks. Mary. Oh, Mary. The giraffe award, what is that? It's for sticking your neck out. Listen, uh, tomorrow's a holiday. Uh, let's come in and do some work. What do you think? In 1986, the Children's Hospital AIDS Program of New Jersey received support from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, and in 1987, from the NIH and CDC. Today, federal health officials estimate that 2 million Americans are infected with the AIDS virus, and that by the end of 1992, as many as a half a million Americans will be sick with AIDS. By then, it is projected that one out of every 10 hospital beds for children will be occupied by an infant or child dying of the AIDS virus infection. AIDS is not a disease of other people. 
All of us must take the responsibility for becoming informed regarding the hazard AIDS presents to us and our loved ones. We must educate everyone, and we must provide all AIDS victims, men, women, and children, with qualified, comprehensive, and compassionate care.